Hello, and thank you for attending the first Lalmal Health Ingredients webinar in our new series. Today we'll be talking about immune health and reviewing ingredients that have been scientifically documented as having a positive effect on the immune system. Depending on where you live in the world, the last three to five months have taught us that we should not be taking our immune health for granted. COVID-19 has changed the world as we know it. As a highly contagious virus that can be easily spread by people who aren't showing symptoms, it is something to take very seriously. Some populations, such as the elderly and immune compromised, are at very high risk. The pictures here show these major cities at the peak of their lockdown. This is a stark contrast to how we normally see these streets, but the reality is that in many places life is starting to get back to normal. In some countries, workplaces have already opened up. Public transportation, restaurants, and other social environments will also open up again. We'll soon be together again, in places where it might be difficult to maintain social distancing. Most scientists tell us to expect a second wave, and some scientists are reminding us that previous pandemics have had three to four waves. We have to behave as though COVID-19 will not go away anytime soon. And also, our usual seasonal viruses, such as the common cold, and influenza are still around. We have to change our behavior to adapt to this new world. So how do we manage to keep ourselves safe? The only way that we can actively protect ourselves from viral infections is by doing our best to support our immune systems by taking a combination of short-term and long-term approaches to our health. As we saw, the best short-term or immediate approach is by physical distancing and physical protection. People are wearing masks and gloves to prevent contamination. We're washing our hands and using hand sanitizer to physically remove viruses and bacteria. And we are simply staying away from other people. Maybe we can use masks and gloves forever, although already there is concern about having the entire global population using these non-biodegradable items every day. But we can't stay home forever. We will have to adapt to being back in the workplace and being around other people. In the long term, we will have to learn to live in a world where we may be more vulnerable to highly contagious viruses, and the best thing we can do is to ensure our immune systems are as strong and healthy as possible. One long-term solution includes getting a vaccine. Perhaps vaccines will be available in another 6 to 12 months, but there is still a lot of testing to do. What we do know is that most of us can control our own health. We can make sure to get enough rest, eat properly, exercise, and supplement our diets in a way that gives us the best chance to improve our immune health. So what is immunity and what is your immune system? Immunity is our ability to resist infection by unicellular organisms such as bacteria or viruses. The immune response can be nonspecific or specific. The nonspecific immune response is also called innate immunity because it's present at birth and activation does not depend on what kind of organism it's fighting. So it doesn't know what the infection is, and does not try to identify it. It involves the skin and the mucosa as natural barriers against invaders. Inflammation is a nonspecific response against microorganisms crossing our physical barriers. The specific immune response, also called adaptive or acquired immunity, is initiated upon exposure to a specific antigen on an invading pathogen, such as a virus like a coronavirus. Acquired immunity takes several days or weeks to develop, as immune cells, such as lymphocytes, are produced. These immune cells synthesize antibodies that target the pathogen for destruction. Nutritional status can affect the ability of the immune system. In fact, poor overall nutrition can lead to deficiencies in micronutrients needed for proper immune function. Luckily, through supplementation, we can provide our bodies with the micronutrients they need to have their best fighting chance against infection. So what ingredients can actually support our immune health? At Lalma Health Ingredients, we produce yeast-based ingredients of a scientific nature, such as our Lalmin brand of vitamins and mineral yeast and other scientifically proven health ingredients. Many of these have authorized health claims as recognized in the EU. These EU claims can also be used as structure function claims in the United States. Vitamin D is one vitamin that has taken the spotlight when it comes to COVID-19. 
There are many preliminary studies showing that people with low serum vitamin D seem to contract COVID-19 at a higher rate and seem to have worse symptoms. Coronavirus or not, vitamin D is extremely important for immune health. Other ingredients we make include selenium yeast, zinc yeast, iron yeast, copper yeast, and yeast beta-glucan. In the next few slides, I'll go into more detail about how these ingredients may support immunity. But first, I'd like to take a few words to explain why yeast-based health ingredients are unique and offer more benefits than supplementation with a non-yeast ingredient. Yeast is a unicellular eukaryotic organism that is part of the fungus kingdom. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is well known as baker's yeast. In its live or active form, it is used to make bread dough rise. It is also a whole food cultured or fermented ingredient that offers so many benefits that consumers are looking for today. It's a natural ingredient that goes back to the beginning of time. Ancient civilizations first used yeast to bake bread and brew fermented beverages. For health purposes, we simply grow and then inactivate Saccharomyces cerevisiae during the production process so it's no longer alive but still provides a multitude of benefits. Our Lalmin brand of vitamin mineral yeast can be used in tablets and capsules and for food fortification. Our Engevita brand of nutritional yeast can be consumed directly as food or used in recipes. Our yeast-based ingredients are natural and vegan. As a member of the fungus kingdom, just as mushrooms are suitable for vegan diets, so is yeast. It is naturally gluten-free. It is non-GMO, and at Lalma Health Ingredients, we only use non-GMO yeast. Many of our ingredients are also non-GMO project verified. It's a clean label ingredient. Consumers are familiar and for the most part comfortable with yeast. It can be certified organic. We produce a few organic nutritional yeast and yeast extract products, and we're beginning to develop organic vitamin and mineral yeast products. So back to immunity. Which yeast products should we be looking at? Let's start with vitamin D. What is vitamin D? It is known as the sunshine vitamin, as most people now know that our skin develops vitamin D naturally during exposure to UV rays of the sun. But study after study shows that at a global level, we're still not getting enough vitamin D. To prevent cancer, we limit our skin's sun exposure by using sunscreen or by covering up our skin. Some cultures require skin covering for religious reasons. And even careful, moderate skin exposure does not give us enough vitamin D, especially in northern climates. The best of both worlds would be to allow us to cover ourselves and get enough of this critical vitamin, and this can be achieved through supplementation. How do we normally get vitamin D? Vitamin D3, or cholecalciferol, is produced during skin exposure to sunlight. D3 found in supplements is usually chemically extracted from lamb's wool, which also develops D3 during sun exposure. Vitamin D2, found in some plants, is also produced when our special strain of yeast is exposed to UV light. Yeast is a good source of vitamin D for vegans and vegetarians, because it contains no animal-derived ingredients. For that reason, it may be considered to be more sustainable or ethical to produce. The natural sterols found in our special non-GMO yeast strain are converted to vitamin D when exposed to sunlight or UV light. Exposing our special yeast strain to UV light allows its native ergosterol to be converted to vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is associated with hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, and many other serious conditions. So what does vitamin D do in our bodies? It has a hormone-like action on mineral metabolism and skeletal health. Vitamin D maintains calcium and phosphorus homeostasis in the circulation. For this purpose, the main target tissues are the intestine, kidneys, and bone. And what effect does it have on our immune system? Vitamin D exerts its effect on the hu human body by interacting with vitamin D receptors that are found on most tissues. These receptors are found on immune cells and allow vitamin D to bind to these cells to modulate reactions such as the inflammatory response or by stimulating the creation of new immune cells or by stimulating cytokine production. Cytokines are used extensively for cell signaling throughout the immune system. 
So vitamin D is important, but why yeast vitamin D? We've already explained that it is vegan and produced in what may be considered a more ethical way. And we have also studied our vitamin D yeast to prove that it is bioavailable, just as vitamin D3. The bioavailability of Lalmin vitamin D yeast was studied at Purdue University with rats. The results show that when incorporated into food, Lalmin vitamin D yeast can significantly raise serum 25 OHD and improve bone health markers. So Lalmin vitamin D is proven to be bioavailable, and in fact, our baking group proved that bread baked with vitamin D2 yeast had an equal effect on blood levels of vitamin D as a vitamin D2 non-yeast supplement. The circulating levels of vitamin D2 were also compared to that of D3, and it was proven that vitamin D2 is also effective at maintaining circulating levels of 25-hydroxyvitamin D. You'll notice that we mostly review EU authorized claims in this webinar, and the reason is simply because no other countries have immune health claims. The EFSA, or the European Food Safety Authority, has developed many strong opinion pieces for certain micronutrients, which examine the scientific evidence available to support immunity, and they have developed health claims based on this extensive work. The authorized health claims for vitamin D include Vitamin D contributes to the normal function of the immune system, and vitamin D contributes to the normal function of the immune system in children. These can also be used as structure function claims in the United States. Some other claims include those for vitamin D's effect on calcium and phosphorus for the growth and maintenance of bones, teeth, muscles, and more. And FDA claims exist for vitamin D and calcium to reduce the risk of osteoporosis. Some other regulatory milestones include the FDA allowing greater levels of vitamin D in bread and baked goods in 2011, and the EU adding Lalma's vitamin D yeast as a novel food ingredient for use in foods, baked goods, and supplements. This webinar won't review the specific vitamin and mineral dosages recommended in any one country, as the dosages vary from country to country. We advise you to check your local country's recommended daily intake. However, we can tell you that Lalmin Vita D is available in two different concentrations, only 70 milligrams of the regular Vita D or 35 milligrams of the concentrated vitamin D will provide you with 15 micrograms of vitamin D. What is selenium? It is a trace element required for the normal functioning of all organisms. It exists in soil in its inorganic form and is taken up by plants, which convert it to a safe organic form. Selenium is used industrially in its inorganic form for a variety of purposes. In some cases, industrial contamination of water sources has led to toxicity of animals and also in plants. We normally get our selenium by eating plants in the forms of fruits and vegetables. The amount of this element present in nature and in individuals is very diverse depending on geographic region and diet. The World Health Organization recommends a daily dose of 55 micrograms for adults. The maximum, which should not be exceeded, is 400 micrograms. An onset of toxicity may occur at 1,540 micrograms. So as we can see, the range between a safe dose and a toxic dose is very narrow. And it's a fine balance. Accumulation of selenium in organisms can be toxic, yet deficiency can lead to the development of serious diseases. The difference between a dose necessary for the proper functioning of the organism and a harmful dose is very narrow. Consuming the proper dose of the most bioavailable form of selenium can provide significant health benefits while avoiding toxicity. Whether selenium is bioavailable or not depends on many factors, primarily the chemical form of this element. Organically complex selenium is much more bioavailable. Up to 95% of it is easily absorbed by the body. Dietary supplementation with selenate and selenite is not recommended since these inorganic forms of selenium have been shown to be more toxic and less bioavailable than organic forms. Regardless, we need selenium in our diet and cannot avoid it. What does it do in our bodies? It's essential for health. It's necessary for fertility, 
thyroid health, and immune support, and may help reduce the risk of some forms of cancer. Selenium is very significant for immune health. Safe selenium forms are also available as selenoproteins. These selenoproteins are responsible for the increased production of antibodies, stimulation of the proliferation of activated T cells and macrophages, the enhanced ability to generate cytotoxic lymphocytes, and the enhanced ability to destroy tumor cells and increase natural killer cell activity. So why is selenium yeast preferred? As mentioned, inorganic selenate and selenite are not recommended as they are toxic and less bioavailable than organic forms. Organically complex selenium is much more bioavailable, and Saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast can convert more than 99% of inorganic selenium into its safest organically bound food forms. In a number of studies in humans and animals, particularly those on diets deficient in selenium, the bioavailability of selenium from selenium yeast was shown to be approximately 1.5 to twofold higher than that of inorganic forms of selenium. Supplementation with selenium yeast raises the plasma selenium concentration in a dose-dependent manner. In addition, we have done our own studies with our Lalmin brand of selenium yeast. The Misham and Green Johnson study showed the activation of immune cells using Lalmin selenium. Also, the research team were able to show a downregulation of interleukin-8, which normally causes inflammation. Selenium has authorized health claims in the EU, which can be used as structure function claims in the United States, including a claim that it contributes to the normal function of the immune system. And the FDA has qualified health claims that selenium may reduce the risk of certain types of cancer. Our Lalmin selenium is available in a 0.1% format, of which only 70 milligrams provides 70 micrograms of selenium. Our more concentrated form is a 0.2% format, requiring only 35 milligrams to provide 70 micrograms of selenium. What is zinc? Zinc is the fourth most common metal in use industrially, trailing only iron, aluminum, and copper. It is used extensively in industry, but is also well known in the health and personal care industry for use as a sunblock and as an antimicrobial called zinc perithione, used in dandruff shampoos. In order for humans to enjoy the health benefits of zinc as a micronutrient, we need to consume animal products such as meat, fish, shellfish, fowl, eggs, and dairy. It is possible to obtain some zinc from plant sources, but the concentration of zinc in plants varies with the level in the soil, and good plant sources are still limited. With adequate zinc in the soil, the food plants that contain the most zinc are wheat and various seeds, including sesame, poppy, and mustard. Zinc may also be found in beans and nuts. One problem with these plant sources is that plant phytates found in pulses and cereals can interfere with zinc absorption. What does zinc do in the body? Zinc has many health claims for its effects on DNA synthesis and cell division, protection of DNA, proteins, and lipids from oxidative damage, maintenance of bone, cognitive function, fertility and reproduction, muscle function, metabolism of fatty acids, maintenance of joints, function of the heart and blood vessels, prostate function, thyroid function, vitamin A metabolism, and maintenance of vision and contribution to normal immune health. How does zinc affect the immune system? We know that zinc deficiency is associated with a decline in most aspects of immune function. It is critical for normal development and function of cells mediating innate immunity, neutrophils, and natural killer cells. Macrophages are also affected by zinc deficiency. Phagocytosis, intracellular killing, and cytokine production are all affected by zinc deficiency. Zinc deficiency adversely affects the growth and function of T and B cells. Deficiency renders people more susceptible to infections, while zinc supplementation in humans has shown a benefit in immune responses to bacterial and viral infections. Zinc has also been shown to inhibit virus replication and has been tested in trials for treatment of the common cold. A systematic review has concluded that when administered within 24 hours of onset of symptoms, zinc reduces the duration and severity of common cold in healthy people. 
When supplemented for at least five months, it reduces the incidence of common colds, school absenteeism, and the prescription of antibiotics for children. So why use zinc yeast? A study was done in collaboration with Dr. Mester of the Canadian National Research Council on Lalmin zinc yeast to verify that all the zinc present is organically bound to the yeast. Zinc incorporated during yeast fermentation was shown to be associated with the cell walls, 36%, the proteins, 30%, and DNA, 28%. Therefore, the zinc present in Lalmin zinc yeast is more than 90% organically bound. Oral zinc supplements can often be found as salts of organic acids, such as zinc sulfonate or zinc gluconate, or as organic forms, such as zinc yeast. The zinc incorporated into yeast has been shown to be more slowly absorbed, acting as a time-release form in animals and man, and to be more bioavailable than the organic salts. The zinc in yeast is also stored in the body tissues better than other forms of zinc. Zinc yeast is, therefore, the recommended form of zinc for human supplementation. The greater bioavailability of zinc yeast is linked to the fact that the majority of zinc is incorporated into the yeast structure. Yeast cells have the ability to accumulate a wide variety of metal ions, including zinc. Health claims associated with zinc are quite diverse, covering cognitive function, bones, hair, skin, and more. There is a health claim in the EU that zinc contributes to the normal function of the immune system, and these claims can be used as structure function claims in the U.S. Our Lalmin zinc is a 5% zinc yeast, and 300 mg will provide 15 mg of supplemental zinc. Lalmin zinc 100 contains 10% zinc. 150 mg will provide 15 mg of zinc. What is iron? Iron is a common metal on Earth and used for mostly structural applications. In health, of course, we associate iron with hemoglobin and our red blood cells' ability to hold oxygen to deliver it to the tissues of our entire body. Iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world and occurs especially in developing countries. When we hear about iron deficiency, we mostly think about anemia. In a routine blood test, anemia is reported as low hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the main protein in your red blood cells. It carries oxygen and delivers it throughout the body. If you have anemia, your iron level will be low too. If it's low enough, your tissues or organs may not get enough oxygen. Symptoms of anemia, like fatigue or pain, happen because your organs aren't getting what they need to work the way they should. We get two types of iron in our diets, heme iron, which is protein associated or from animal sources, and non-heme iron, which is usually from plant-based sources. The absorption of non-heme iron may be as low as 2%, and depends on other nutritional factors, but heme iron is not affected by ingestion of other nutritional components and is absorbed at a constant rate of 20 to 30 percent. The heme molecule is absorbed intact and the iron is released in the mucosal cells. This is not particularly helpful for anyone wanting to limit their animal protein consumption. So what does iron do in the body? It prevents anemia which can help to improve fatigue and cognition. Supplementation is particularly important for premenopausal women, athletes, and vegetarians or vegans. And iron is critical to our immune system. Iron supports proliferation of T lymphocytes and generates reactive oxygen species, which may help to kill off pathogens. Why use iron yeast? Non-heme, or a non-animal source of iron, usually has relatively poor bioavailability because of its tendency to become oxidized and precipitate as it passes through the GI tract. Also, iron supplements are sometimes poorly tolerated because of the need to consume high doses, which is a consequence of the poor bioavailability of inorganic supplements. So ideally, one would want an iron supplement with improved bioavailability and therefore reduced side effects. Iron yeast fits this need very well. A Lallemand X-ray crystallography study shows that close to 100% of iron was incorporated into the yeast molecular structures. Rats fed with iron yeast showed improved blood and histological parameters and increased bioavailability, 
compared to inorganic supplements. Therefore, improved bioavailability with iron yeast may have a positive effect on the immune system. Just as an aside, iron yeast is not only bioavailable, but it is sensory stable for food fortification, for example, in dairy or cheese. Normally, it's difficult to fortify a food with iron, as it often results in the creation of off flavors in a short period of time. The EU health claim states simply, iron contributes to the normal function of the immune system, and iron has other claims regarding energy, cognitive function, and reduction of tiredness and fatigue. These can be used for structure function claims in the United States. Lalmin iron is a 1% iron yeast, and 1 gram of it provides 10 milligrams of highly bioavailable iron. Copper is not a supplement we hear much about. It's found in the Earth's crust and used for numerous applications in electronics and architecture. It also has antimicrobial activity. How would we normally consume copper? The content of different foods varies considerably. Shellfish and organ meats are the richest sources of copper, whereas muscle meats contain much less. Among plant foods, seeds, including nuts and grains, have a high abundance of copper. Fruits and vegetables tend to have less. Removal of the germ and bran from whole grains greatly reduces the copper content of the product, for example, standard wheat flour. Unpolluted fresh water has very little copper. Because of its role in facilitating iron uptake, copper deficiency can produce anemia-like symptoms among other abnormalities, such as bone abnormalities, hypopigmentation, impaired growth, increased incidence of infections, osteoporosis, hyperthyroidism, and abnormalities in glucose and cholesterol metabolism. Severe copper deficiency due to reduced absorption after bariatric bypass surgery has become frequent. What does copper do in the body? It is essential in the aerobic respiration of all eukaryotes. In mitochondria, it's found in the enzyme cytochrome C oxidase. The metabolism of copper remains incompletely understood and until recently nearly ignored in acute medicine. Several case reports and investigations conducted over the last two decades have shown that deficiency is more frequent than previously suspected and there are potential public health consequences. How copper affects the immune system is through the copper-related enzyme cytochrome C oxidase. It is needed for energy production in immune cells. Another copper enzyme, superoxide dismutase, plays a role in the protection of immune cells against reactive oxygen species. Moderate and even marginal copper deficiency affects some activities of T lymphocytes and phagocytic cells adversely. Severe copper deficiency generally changes the phenotypic profiles of immune cells in blood, bone marrow, and lymphoid tissues. It also suppresses a number of activities of immune cells, such as lymphocytes and phagocytes. And why is copper yeast interesting? It has been shown that yeast grown in the presence of copper bioaccumulates the copper. The copper therefore becomes organically bound. As we saw for zinc and iron, this binding probably improves the bioavailability of the copper. Some known copper binding proteins in baker's yeast include cytochrome C oxidase and superoxide dismutase. The immune claim for copper is the same as we've seen for previous micronutrients. It contributes to the normal functioning of the immune system. Other authorized health claims in the EU include those for connective tissue, energy metabolism, normal functioning of the nervous system, contributes to normal hair and skin pigmentation, iron transport in the body, and protection of cells from oxidative stress. Lalmin copper is a 0.1% copper yeast, and one gram will give you one milligram of copper. What is yeast beta-glucan? Yeast beta-glucan is one of a group of beta-D-glucose polysaccharides naturally occurring in the cell walls of cereals, bacteria, and fungi. These all have significantly differing physiochemical properties dependent on their source. Typically, beta-glucan forms a linear backbone with 1,3 beta-glycosidic bonds, but varies res with respect to molecular mass, solubility, viscosity, branching structure, and gelation properties, causing diverse physiological effects in animals. They are important structural elements of the cell wall 
and also serve as energy storage in bacteria, fungi including yeast, algae, and plants, but they are not present in vertebrate and in invertebrate tissue. We can only get yeast beta glucan by consuming baker's yeast directly as inactivated nutritional yeast or by taking supplements that contain it. And what does it do in our bodies? The immunomodulating effect of yeast cell walls was discovered in the 80s and soon after it was demonstrated that the immunological activity derives from beta-1,3 glucan. Now there are many studies that show the anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial abilities of immunomodulating beta-glucan. How yeast beta-glucan is thought to affect immunity is very interesting. Humans cannot synthesize beta-glucan, therefore when ingested, the immune system recognizes yeast beta-glucan as foreign. The immune system responds to ingestion of beta-glucan as it would to a pathogen. It recognizes invading pathogens through pattern recognition receptors. The pattern recognition receptors recognize beta-glucan, and the binding of beta-glucan to these receptors induces a cascade of immune response, such as phagocytosis, oxidative burst, and the production of cytokines and chemokines in dendritic cells and macrophages. It is proposed that, with regular consumption of yeast beta-glucan, the immune system remains primed to react to any invading pathogen. As it turns out, yeast beta-glucans don't have any approved health claims globally, so why use them? Yeast beta-glucans have been extensively studied and have been proven to be safe and effective. They have shown to result in reduction in the incidence of common cold episodes during the cold season in otherwise healthy subjects, less severe symptoms during upper respiratory tract infections, reduced severity of upper respiratory tract infections in post-marathon participants, improvement in people enduring long-term stress, and fewer upper respiratory tract infections overall. Yeast beta-glucan is a safe way to support your natural defenses. It has no known side effects. Brewers and bakers yeast have long history of safe consumption. In the previously presented human studies, no signs of toxicity were reported. Safety can also be implied from the mode of action. Beta-glucans do not directly attack the infected cells or the infection-causing agents, but modulate the host's defense mechanism. Macrophages were activated, but only reacted if foreign cells such as bacteria or viruses invaded the system. Yeast beta-glucan is classified as a novel food in the EU and China and is generally recognized as safe as a food in the United States. L'Aldefense is a highly concentrated yeast beta-glucan at 85% pure. In summary, remember when it comes to immune health, your health is in your hands. Supplementation with the micronutrients we have reviewed here today can provide scientifically proven support to your immune system and yeast-based ingredients are a natural, whole food way to provide this supplementation to any population regardless of their dietary restrictions. That concludes our webinar for today. Thank you for joining us for this presentation about immune health in a pandemic world. If you're interested in more information, please feel free to contact us using the contact information provided in the last slide.